Hi there guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Kitchen Day Modelling. And yeah, so FX ground vehicle. Um, I've never built a ground vehicle from FX, but this one I quite like, so we will see. So it's a Ferret Mark II uh, Scout Car in 1 in 35th. Um, these were well known throughout the Cold War um, and afterwards, actually. These stayed around quite a while after. So, obviously, the inside of the box, really nice box art, even though it is computer generated. It's not a hand painted one, but I'll forgive them for that because it is really quite nice. Uh, on the near side of the box, it's a bit battered in the corner. Um, just a miniaturized version. Same on the other end, usual warnings in multiple languages. And then on this side, it's upside down. Of course, it's upside down. Uh, little blurb about the vehicle and the three variations in the camo scheme. So these literally are exactly what they say on the tin. Two man crew, little fast bugger, go find where the Soviets are hiding, report back, try not to get blown up, call in the chieftains. So, oh, start with the instructions. So, lovely little blurb about the ferret itself. And the actual instructions themselves are the new style FX ones because I think this is a completely new kit for them. But it's nice to see straight off the bat. Um, you do get your generic. Uh, I can't think words. Uh, generic FX style instructions, but with the new instructions, it actually highlights the previous part you've placed onto the vehicle, so it shows what. Um, what it should look like, how the new part, next part should attach to it. Otherwise, really quite nice, really clear, really clear, really crisp and clean. Overall, quite pleased. We will see. Now, a second. Ah, okay. So they've included the radio set that sits directly behind the driver, so you would be able to see it through an open hatch which is nice, but they've mitigated any of the other in-hole details. Which is fair enough, I can understand that. Uh, the FX don't do full interior kits. I don't know anyone that does a full interior kit for one of these, or one of these in general. Accurate armour. That's who does another version of this. They also do the Fox, which I quite like, which is one of these, but fitted with a CVRT turret. Um, but that's another story for another day, because they are quite expensive um so on suspension quite logically thought out uh, how it's put together uh springs appear to be solid but we shall see in the bags or bag i don't know bag um see how it comes out but it's really nice they do the way they do it with the red highlighting to show what part is next Etc. Etc. Um, they give the option for the cover for the spare wheel that's mounted inside the vehicle, uh, which is really nice. Uh, tall smoke, uh, smoke, smoke discharges. Oh, no. oh, new teeth. That ah, false teeth. So, forgive me a little bit. But no, really nice detail. Really clear, crisp instructions with plenty of optional extras to fit to the vehicle. And onto the light turret itself, uh, which just contained a 30 cal uh, browning or Bren, depending. Um, but really nicely done, really crisp, really clear. Should be an absolute piece of cake. And then at the end, they show you how all the hatches can be assembled in open positions, which is a nice touch. I like this. Then on to paint schemes. Okay, so your generic. Uh, paint scheme in NATO green, uh, Bassus, so range safety unit, green and red, and UN NATO peacekeeping, whatever you like to call it, in Cypress of white. That's nice. Okay, decals. Not much to sing and dance about here because the spirit is quite bland when it comes to decals. 
But being there are a bit of decals, they are quite nice. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There we go. You do have to have the light in a certain way to be able to see, like, in the gap in the 25 to show they are not two separate numbers. They are a singular number. Uh, which means that they will apply nicely to the body um, and they won't be too difficult to dull down. Well, soften. That's where it's it. And true to ethics standard, it is one bag. So let's pop it open and have a quick look. What's inside? Ugh. Nope. Almost launch it across the room. Okay. So. In the big bag. Well, that's a bit of a sickly green even for me. But, oh well. Okay, so really nice injection moulding. Quite quite pleased so far with the initial look of the details. A bit annoying the soundtrack is made up of three pieces. Uh, Jerry can three pieces to be expected. Various whatnot. Um, plates, so far, so good. Nothing that screams, oh my god, that's horrible. That's quite nice. I say that and it screams, oh my god, that's horrible. Right, do that one last. Hey, look. Okay, so on to the main hull of the vehicle. Uh, once again, nice one-piece side skirt. Uh, really nicely detailed. All the way throughout, especially the suspension points where wiring is attached, and even the under underside with uh, the access panels to get to the engine bay. Apart from that, um, actually, the engine covers are separate. So, if you can find a correct engine to mount in the engine bay, I suppose you could have it with an engine on display. I'm gonna have to do some digging to see if I can find one because I do quite like these. Perhaps turn one of these into a fox. Possibly. We'll see how that goes, because I think I have a CVR... T I do have a CVRT behind me. Mm, we shall see, because I'm going to have to do a bit of experimenting. Okay, so on to what we just see in the interior. So single pack and double pack radios. Uh, one's going to be... Clansman and Precessed Clansman, I think them. Uh, interior detail, really quite nice on the interior of the hatches. That's really nice. And then on to one of the last ones. So same again. There's no ejection pin marks where you can see them unless it's on the inside. Uh, the brown fifth cap, really nice detail. Lights, really nice. Anything that's flimsy has been protected by one of these end pieces, which is nice. Probably going to be a little bit fiddly to get off. But otherwise, apart from that, there's nothing to have a whinge about. Bar this. So when I said, oh my god, there's nothing to go about. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> okay, so this is something very much to go about. This is all suspension and wheels. And they have done two part moulded wheels. But, straight away I can see it, there is a lip on the edge of each wheel. Um, so they flare out slightly on the edge. I can tell straight away that is going to need sanding down dramatically um, to hide that. Eventually result in some use. And the springs are solid. I can understand why the springs are solid. Ease of manufacture rather than putting in uh, plastic springs. Uh, not plastic, metal springs. Um, I can understand that. But I think as well it doesn't help the uh, colour of the plastic is quite sickly. Well, otherwise, apart from that, the wheels, you could possibly sort them from an aftermarket set, uh, same as springs. I'm sure someone produced an aftermarket set of wheels and springs for this already. But I have to have a hunt, see if we can find some. But not for now, because this kit's going to get built just using generic bits and bobs. And then in the last bag, we have clear. So we have pretty much all light lenses, which is nice. And it's separately sealed from the rest of the kit. But they look quite happy. There's nothing that glares anything obviously wrong. Okay then. So. Let's get on with the show. So then guys and girls. This week we've got the ferret on the table. Um, what can we say about this? So the ferret scout car. Um, designed for the British Army and Commonwealth Forces. Um, dating back. 
originated in the 1950s. Um, wonderful little bit of kit, to be brutally honest. Um, so she saw service from 1950s right the way through to Ukraine. She's a, they've currently got them out in Ukraine at the moment, doing exactly what they were designed to do, uh, which is to be a light, fast arm vehicle which can probe enemy positions and report weaknesses back to command bases um, for them to be exploited and pushed through. And never designed to come against, as in toe to toe with heavy armour, um, but could run away, put it that way. Uh, designed to go find where the enemy is, have a look, run away, because um, she could do 58 mile an hour. So that's not surprising, that's not surprising considering she was powered by a Rolls Royce uh, B60 engine. Um, yeah, so nice little engine in her. She could go like the clappers. Uh, four wheel drive, so she can go up, go over train like no tomorrow, but not heavily armoured. So she could withstand small arms fire, so coax, um, infantry, rifles, etc. But anything with a bit more meat to it, she's got problems. Um, so the ferret tip the scales in at about four tons, give or take. Uh, I've got the actual number here somewhere. 3.7 tons, there we go. Um, but it's list of active, active war zones it's been involved in is quite substantial. Uh, so everything from Cyprus, uh, the Cambodian Civil War, the Irish Troubles, the Rhodesian Bush War, um, Serious Crisis, and the Myanmar, or Burma, to everyone else who knows it, the Iran-Iraq War, the Gulf War, so the invasion of Kuwait, the uh, Syrian Civil War, and the Russian occupation of Ukraine. Um, so this little stout car, well, the ferret, is quite a universal vehicle. So obviously, as we can see with this one, uh, she's got the turret on it with the Browning uh, 762 built into it, um, but there is other variants available. So at one point, I think it's the Mark IV, um, or Mark V, it's one or the other. Um, they basically bolstered the turret with a pair of chins um, to mount swing fire and tank missiles, so she had a bit more punch. Um, also as well, they produced a variant called the Fox, uh, which basically had a scimitar turret slammed on top. It's quite a funky little vehicle. No one actually makes a model of that. So I might have to get another one of these in the future and do a bit of modification. So, enough of me waffling on. Time for some music. <laughs> 